The financial world is bigger than ever these days, thanks to cryptocurrency, which has opened the doors for people who historically had little to no interest in finance, thanks to the seeming complexity of the stock market. And let's be honest, the stock market has long felt inaccessible to most people. Very few people own stocks, and you'll see reports of between 55 and 60% of people in the last few years actually owning stocks, but only about 14% are directly invested in stocks, while 52% have retirement accounts like a 401k. For many, the stock market is this faraway, unknowable thing, but it's subject to a lot of the same simple things that the rest of the world endures, and it's even been shut down for some bizarre reasons over the years. Number 10. COVID shut down the New York Stock Exchange In early 2020, just as we were all adjusting to the COVID-19 pandemic, the New York Stock Exchange found itself shutting down as well. It was March when it shut down, so the system could switch over to electronic trading and thus remove the need for everyone to share a floor and potentially expose themselves to the virus. The move came after two tested positive for COVID. The exchange remained closed for just over two months, then reopened in May 2020 with precautions in place to allow people to return, such as wearing masks and practicing social distancing just like everyone else was supposed to be doing. Still, most people stayed away to work remotely. Number 9. The backup system for the Tokyo Stock Exchange was set to off If you ever called tech support for something electronic not working, the first question they ask you always sounds condescending beyond belief. Is it plugged in? Do you have it turned on? Most of us feel insulted by these questions, but the truth is they ask them because that's actually the problem very often. It also seemed to be why the Tokyo Stock Exchange was shut down in 2020. Trading was halted for an entire day in what was labelled in many media sources as a software glitch and a hardware failure. Backup systems failed as well, so there was nothing for traders to do for the entire day. So what happened to the backup system? Someone had set it to off. It had been set to off for the entire five years since they'd had their system upgraded, but it was never needed before, so nobody noticed. Ironically, prior to their upgrade, the system was set to switch back over, even if it was set to off, but the upgrade removed that feature. Number 8. A solar flare closed the Toronto Stock Exchange Most of the reasons the stock exchange is going to be shut down are earthly, as we will see, but not all of the reasons. Turns out the sun has it in for us sometimes, and that's what happened to the Toronto Stock Exchange in 1989 when a solar flare shut it down on August the 16th. Months earlier, a massive solar flare had caused a blackout across the Canadian province of Quebec and parts of Ontario. The one in August was even stronger, but the earlier one had at least prepared officials with some idea of what to expect and how to handle it. The electromagnetic interference caused three different disk drives meant to keep the system running as redundancies to fail one after the other like falling dominoes. The result was the exchange being offline for three hours until repairs could be made. Number 7. Rage Against the Machine Storms the New York Stock Exchange Rage Against the Machine has always been steeped in politics, as if the name of the band itself wasn't enough of a clue. For years, their music has been pretty explicitly political, even if a number of their fans were never clear on that. In one very clear example of their beliefs, the band actually filmed a video on Wall Street that involved getting the New York Stock Exchange shut down. Directed by filmmaker Michael Moore, himself no stranger to controversial political opinions, the video for Sleep Now in the Fire was supposed to take place on the steps outside the exchange. According to the lead singer Tom Morello, they had a permit for the steps, but not the sidewalk. And as they were filming, Moore directed them to go onto the sidewalk. So they did, and a police officer immediately told them to move back. Moore had told the band not to stop performing no matter what, so they kept playing. Except, being a music video, they weren't really playing, they were just miming the movements to go along to playback of the song. So the officer tried to unplug Morello's guitar and nothing happened. Likewise happened when he shut down the bass and the drums. Frustrated and angry, the officer then arrested Michael Moore, at which point Moore yelled at the band to take the exchange. Morello and crew headed inside and told security they were there to take the exchange. Security had an alarm, summoned the riot cops and shut the whole thing down in response. Number 6. The movie Trading Places halted six billion dollars in trades. The 1983 film Trading Places is arguably the funniest film that ever set its climax on the floor of the stock exchange. In the movie, Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy team up to financially turn the tables on a couple of crooked old millionaires who ruined both their lives. The trading sequences in the movie were filmed at the World Trade Center's commodity exchange called Comex. That gave it a real air of authenticity, but it also posed a problem. It was the actual exchange, and a film crew in the way made work impossible. The distraction of having the actors and production on location during normal business ended up putting a halt to six billion dollars in trades. Naturally, the production had to pack up and come back on a weekend when the market was closed. 
Number 5. Trading dropped over 40% during the O.J. Simpson trial verdict. It's hard to imagine today just how big of a deal the O.J. Simpson trial was if you weren't there to experience it. You can read about it, but understanding how it seemed to dominate the media and pop culture for months is just something you had to experience firsthand. In retrospect, it doesn't even make sense, as O.J. Simpson was barely a household name at the time, a man whose professional football career had ended over 15 years earlier, and who had only acted in a handful of B-movies, as well as the Naked Gun franchise. Nonetheless, the trial became the proverbial media circus, and it's estimated as many as 150 million people watched the verdict being read on TV. Trading on the stock exchange dropped 41% at the time. A baffling set of predictions from before the trial estimated that record numbers of people would be calling in sick to watch, thus destroying overall productivity, not to mention slumps in housing and rises in unemployment, all linked to the trial. The stock market slump was predicted as well, with the expectation that traders would abandon their work to watch what happens. Number 4. Groucho Marx stopped trading for 15 minutes in 1950. Once upon a time, Groucho Marx was one of the biggest names in Hollywood. He was so famous that in 1950, they invited him to the New York Stock Exchange to just tour the place and look around. Being a consummate entertainer, when Marx was given access to the public address system, he took control and began to sing Lydia the Tattoo Lady for the assembled traders on the floor. Word is, when they tried to take the microphone from him, he lamented how he'd lost all of his money on the stock market in the crash of 1929, so they owed him at least a song. And with that, he tied up the market for a full 50 minutes. The distraction was enough to get the attention of the traders who stopped work to watch. Marx was a professional entertainer after all, and it made the song famous about 11 years earlier. Number 3. Squirrels shut down the markets twice are squirrels conspiring to financially destroy America? Well, let's leave that question to zoologists, but there is mounting evidence that the little rodents have it in for the stock market since they've shut it down not once, but twice already. You'd be hard-pressed to find many things between natural disasters and war that have ever shut down the stock exchange twice, but squirrels did it. In 1987, a squirrel shut down markets for 82 minutes after it shorted electrical systems for the National Association of Securities Dealers. It was estimated that about 20 million shares were unable to be traded as a result. In 1994, another squirrel chewed through some wires that the stock market's backup systems weren't prepared to replace, closing things down for 34 minutes. Number 2. A loud noise shut down European exchanges. What do small dogs, your grandma, and the stock market have in common? Well, you want to try and protect them from loud noises that can disturb them. In 2018, it was discovered that the computers controlling European markets are sensitive to loud whistles, and they can and will shut down when they have to endure those whistles. The problem was caused by a fire alarm at a data center in Sweden. The noise created by the fire suppression system was so loud, it damaged the servers and shut down the stock exchanges for seven whole countries, including Denmark, Finland, and parts of Iceland's servers. They had to fly in new servers, so the markets were down for several hours until things could be repaired. In case you're curious about the science, it has to do with vibrations. The noise damaged the alignment of the hard drives in the servers, basically shaking them so much that they became useless in terms of their read-write abilities. Noises that reach 110 decibels can affect a hard drive, and the fire system was putting out 130. Number 1. A Woman in a Tight Sweater This entry is either the most unbelievable or the most absolutely, totally believable, depending on how you look at the world. In 1968, not just the New York Stock Exchange, but Wall Street itself was crippled by Francine Gottfried, otherwise known as Sweater Girl. Gottfried worked on Wall Street at the time, and she used to walk to the office. And there's no reasonable way to say this, so we're just gonna say what happened. Groups of men used to hang out and watch her because she wore tight sweaters. Gottfried's figure was such that she cast what you might cool and alluring silhouette, which is to say that the woman had large breasts, and in 1968 the idea of massive crowds of men leaving a large-breasted woman alone was not one that occurred too often. According to the stories, each passing day saw more and more men joining the crowds to watch her travel to work, culminating in all-out pandemonium on the afternoon of September the 19th. A crowd of 5,000 gathered, while some sources say 6,000, abandoning their offices and leaving the stock exchange unmanned. Police had to close the street and escort her to work at a data processing center as the crowd damaged cars, climbing on them to get a better look. Trading came to a halt as bankers and traders ran to their windows to see what was happening. By October the 5th, other women were showing up to cause a scene as well, complete with published measurements and police for crowd control. As for Gottfried, it said she was offered $100,000 to make some nightclub appearances. No word on whether she accepted. 